I actually I was um I was into acting before uh, modeling. I did like um like a few things modeling, like a a Walmart ad. I was like a dad. Um, yeah, I've been into it since the '90s, late '90s. After I came out, I, well, I was in the Marine Corps, and then after the Marine Corps, then I did more of it. Um, so I just did a little bit of acting. I was on Law and Order. I was like an assassin sniper. I got killed. You know, one of those dead bodies. You know, with a story, right? Uh, so it's a, it's on IMDb, I swear. <laughs> but um, but no, so it's it's funny. Everybody has to do Law and Order. Like I think everybody that comes from New York has to be a, somehow on Law and Order. You know. Um, but then um, I did all that like behind the scene, uh, in front of the camera stuff. And then I wanted to do behind the scenes stuff, and uh, I was like, I like writing. I started getting into writing. Like, um, I'm gonna say, five years. I've actually I've been writing since like, uh, God, sometime in the 2000s. I've been writing, but I got into screenwriting like four or five years ago. So I I just got into it. Just I was like, oh, yeah, I want to learn how to screenwrite. I started reading books. So I like reading books. Read a few books on screenwriting. And I started getting better, and eventually I um I well before that I went to film school. <laughs> I did uh, end up going to film school. Um, I'm going out of sequence, <laughs> but uh, I know right. Uh, anyway, so I went to film school uh, to basically get better at my craft, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I think I I think that's an avenue some people take, right? I went to film school. I wanted to I would look okay. I want to do the film stuff. I want to be behind the scenes, right? So I ended up going to a digital film academy. Um, oh. So I got, yeah. So I did my my certificate there, and um, and then I was like, I got, you know, I had I was like a perfect student. I had like a four point or whatever. And because uh, I'm really into like if I get into something, I'm obsessive, you know. Mm -hmm. Same. So I ended up, uh, yeah, right. If you're gonna do it, it, some people just have that, you know, concentration. So I ended up doing really well. Then I had a few projects I was working on. Like remote agent, that's something I'm writing now. I'm gonna write a feature for it. I wrote a short, and I was gonna film it during that time, but then the pandemic happened. So the pandemic has, uh, you know, set back a lot of my plans as far as like um, working, right? So I, none of my projects have really have gotten out because of uh, like small things, but nothing like really like uh, professional because. Um, Joe's out. <laughs> um, no, so, m uh, like, my, my main projects are coming out now, or they're going to come out now because um, now I'm getting the opportunity. I'm getting financing for uh, for one or two of my projects now. That's what I'm working on now. So it's like it's like a process. I think we become who we become. It's like a long process, but this whole pandemic has, I think, has set back a lot of people. Like, I'm sure you guys were set back somehow you know because you get oh, yeah. you can't work you, you know so you, i can't work um on any i just started i i did my first on uh on set uh work was uh i was gaffing for a friend they asked me to do uh gaffing and i never done gaffing before so i had to like learn everything on gaffing i went to film school but you learn a little bit but then after somebody asked you to do it you know kind of more professionally for a low sag film you have to know what you're doing, so you have to learn a lot. So I learned how to how to be a gaffer <laughs> in a short in a short amount of time, and I did the pilot. So that's the one that I was telling you guys about. I did a pilot called the Spirit Box. Um, so I was doing that for ten days. Um, it was brutal. You know, I'm not. You know, when you're not used to being on set for like twelve, fourteen hours. So um, so I put some pictures online. I I think it came out really really good um, as far as like. Um, the whole thing, like as far as my lighting, I, I learned how to do it properly, and it looks good. I think it looked good. I think they were happy with my work, you know. But um, but normally I'm writing. I'm I'm home writing. Um, it's what I do. Like you know, I have two girls. Um, I do a lot of writing and I work on financing. You know, I worked in Wall Street a long time ago, so I have a thing for finance, and so now I'm getting uh, two projects finance. That's what I'm working on right now. Uh, the Diary of Kate the Ripper and The Fallen. So, um, anyway, uh, it's, I know I'm, I'm going on a rant, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll let you Don't guys ask questions <laughs> if you guys. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, I'm really happy that you said something about financing because, like, I did read online that you are searching for financing for a future film, and so, like, number one, how if you've gotten any success in terms of financing for that film, how? How did you manage to land any of that? Well, here's it's a good uh, thing. So, a lot of people. Um, what you have to be careful for is people that try to charge you money. So you you'll run into that a lot because um, you're 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 not doing in person meetings anymore because of pandemic, right? So you don't know if somebody's real or not, right? So normally I could go meet somebody. Let's say you have a dinner with somebody or whatever. You can kind of guess if they're full of it or if they're not. But uh, during the pandemic, it's kind of hard when you're meeting people through Zoom meetings. Um, to, to gauge whether they're good or not. So I wanted to start off by, by stating that there's a lot of fake people that say they're going to do something for you, and they can't. So Been it's there. honestly, it's a process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a process of elimination. I, um, I, again, I've talked to so many people, right? It, it, it's just reaching out through connections. Like uh, LinkedIn is, is a real uh, place that you actually meet professionals. But at the same time, you could actually have people like saying, well, you give me money and I'll put you put your work out there. Right. So LinkedIn, you can still be you got to be careful because you do have a lot of scammers on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be careful. So if, as soon as somebody mentions, I know this person, I know that person and they mention money like there's no reason why you should be giving them money. First of all, um, usually what you do if you're getting financing, uh, they have a finder's fee. So like that's normal. Like you get a finder's fee, you pay them like it could range. The so finder's fee could range uh five percent, whatever. Um the one thing that I have noticed, and there's a lot of detail behind financing, so I'll try to give you as much detail as I can, right? So okay, so one thing I notice is um there's several levels of fees that people can can uh can come out and be like, Well, because I know it sounds good. Like if let's say Joe, you you wanna get financing for your film, right? But then I tell you, I'm going to take an executive a credit and this. And when people start talking about 10%, uh, 20%, you really have to pay attention, right? Because let's say $5 million, one of my projects is $5 million, right? So then they, they're doing a, finance fee of, uh, a finder's fee of, of 5%, okay? So that's 5% out of my project that's coming out, right? So they're getting the money from somewhere else. So they take another fee they can have uh again these fees can range from five to twenty percent right so that's it that's let's say that's ten percent that's fifteen percent of your money right so you have fifteen percent out of your five million so you're thinking you have a five million dollar budget you don't have a five million. so there's a lot of uh technical things that you have to look out for so so i don't just jump in and be, that's why it takes so long I, that's what I realized, right? It takes so long. I had somebody tell me, because I got a distribution deal. That sounds good, right? Like, oh, you know, Eddie has, uh, I have the paperwork. It says I have a distribution deal with, um, I have it somewhere. Anyway, so it's for the Direct Kate the Rippers. Um, international, uh, worldwide distribution, Direct Kate the Ripper. It sounds good. Because what you want to do is when you start, um, when you, let's say you write a, a film, it's already gotten like a, um, no, right. It's got. Uh, I got. I've uh, semi finalists. I'm getting several. Um, the it's a good project, right? The Diary of Kate the Ripper, right? So somebody was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna give you distribution. Your project looks good. They look at your project. It looks good. But then I realized they they're asking me for thirty percent for distribution, right? Thirty percent of my project. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot. So then I'm like out of. For them just distributing my project, I'm already giving them thirty percent of my of my of my thing. And if and if Joe is taking another thirty percent, right? What do I? You know, that's sixty percent. So there's there's so many fees that people could. So don't be in a hurry to just be like uh, I'm trying to give you the gist. Don't be in a hurry to be like I want a distribution. Be I think things happen when they're supposed to, right? So I think uh, what um, I'm working now with uh, with some people, right, that are getting my financing for me. Uh, they they charge me a fee. I said I know what it is, right? I have to be comfortable. Uh, Five percent finder's fee, and then like uh, they have like a ten percent distribution fee or something like that. Anyway, you have to do the math before you sign any contracts. 
so it's a process so finding money is not just like if you think about it five million dollars they're doing another five million for my other movie it's just it's a lot of money and think about most movies don't make money right most of them don't make money and theaters can't even be filled up at uh what 10 percent capacity i don't even know what the capacity is unless you're in texas or florida then they, you know they go full you know but most places they don't have full capacity so you really have to analyze and think like is it i i think unless you're like a big company like um like the big boys you know um it's slow to get financing i think this setback uh independent filmmakers it set them back a little bit if you're trying to get like five million dollars for that type of money because it's just um i think it just you know people are not really going to the movies yet uh look we have another virus uh, variant so it, it's complicated i think financing is complicated i think that um, you have to find the people you feel comfortable working with, which I did, right? And and then we just, I just, I, I keep writing projects and, you know, um, and, you know, and just trust that they're going to get me the money eventually. Again, eventually. Um, this doesn't happen overnight. This has been like at least eight, eight months or something like that that I've been working with this company. Um, I've had other people I work with in the past and they, we're going to get you money. We're going to get you money. That... They don't get you money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People, people, again, people talk a lot and don't do anything. And I'm not saying anything about, like, people. I'm not trying to, like, name any names or anything like that. But you have to just, right? Like, if I tell you guys, hey, guys, I have this deal and this is and that. And then you guys keep looking at me. Well, no, he doesn't have the deal yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't talk like that. I talk in the sense that, like, I, I speak the truth. You know what I'm saying? If I don't have something, I don't say... I have it like we're, we're we're they're trying to get me money like they're waiting on money this is the process everybody goes through again unless you're um, you're working with a big like I've had I, I spoken to like a, a vertical entertainment and and they were like when you have a project you know send it to us right and then we'll, we'll you know we'll see if we'll distribute it like you know I've had conversations with uh, with several people um, but again, it's hard to get money doing right now, you know, for anybody, I think, you know, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But it's possible. Again, like, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, it's definitely not impossible for sure. Um, but it's definitely a bit, because film must be, and you're right, film is a riskier bet right now because, you know, of everything going on with the, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything like that. Like, even though theaters are, from what I've seen anyway, the last few times that I've been to the movies, theaters are starting to get more and more packed. But, you know, it's still it's still mm -hmm. a process. It's still not what it was. Like, I remember a few weeks ago when I went to see Eternals. The theater, honestly, was pretty packed, and it was really nice to see that. But at the end of the day, like, you know, it's still – it's not quite there yet. It's not quite, you know, uh, where it was in December of 2019. But, I, you know, it, it will get there eventually. But, like, for the fact of the matter is it's not where it was. So I definitely understand when you say that it's – you know, it's it's a riskier bet at this point, too. And just to, I just want to make sure that I get this detail too. You said that you met these, I don't know, like, you know, these financiers through connections on LinkedIn, but correct yes. me if I'm wrong. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, it, it, again, but it's a process of elimination. I've met several people, like I'm sure you guys have too. Um, when you're interviewing people, you, you'll, um, you'll meet a lot of people that say they can do things, but they can't, you know. Mm -hmm. um, again, you just, as long as nobody's asking you for money i think you're fine when people start asking you for money that's when the issues start coming up um but again i worked in finance before and i understand that that's the way it works like like i've i ask people for money like that's what it is that's what financing is when i worked in 67 wall street you you basically i have this investment right it's the best thing ever. It's going to make you money, this much money. You, you got to invest, right? That's the same thing I do now. You know, like I, I do, I design like um, like poster ideas. I do different uh, poster ideas and I post it online to have people, you know, you, I'm sure you guys seen it. I, I, I post all the time. And now um, you see, when you mentioned comic book, I thought it was funny. I'm having somebody draw up my, like a, the comic book for the Diary of Kate the Ripper. So you'll oh, see like okay. Kate. Yeah, so I know I love comic books. I grew up. Uh, I love DC. I love. I'm a big DC fan. Um, I don't have any problems with Marvel. They uh, cinematically they make better product, right? Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, 
It's just, it's just, I, I, I honestly, I think it's just bad screenwriting. Uh, uh, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I, I have no idea. When you have so much money and so much of a budget, uh, like I know, uh, I know somebody that was that's ma that was married to like the CEO of uh, Warner Brothers, right? And um, like it's changed. It's not the same anymore. Like you know, mm -hmm. I ha I have no idea w what they're doing as far as like it's just it's a corporation. It's a business, right? Mm -hmm. And like when you have so much money, I don't know if you guys ever think about this. You have so much money to just throw away, to burn, right? How can you not hire somebody that writes a decent movie? Again, it comes down to, right? I, am I wrong? Like, it, yeah, do you guys it's, think it's great? Yeah. I never I never understood. Like, And again, because, you know, and you're, you're a thousand percent right. You have all this money. You know, the screen, the script is the most important thing. That's the thing that will keep mm -hmm. people coming back to watch the movie again. You know, like that'll be the thing that spreads a good word of mouth. You know, did you care about like what was happening and who was happening to? Did you feel like it was happening to you? Because that's the stuff that st makes the film st stand out more. So I think when it comes to like a lot of these other big budget films, you know, they don't spend enough on the writing part, which again, you can't have character, a movie without character, that. and yeah, and characters exactly. And they, I guess, they just blow the rest of it on the special effects and lunch on set. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. That's, it looks that's cool. Just a it looks conspiracy cool. Conspiracy theory there, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. But, um, Eddie, do you have, like, any social media profiles so, like, you know, uh, people who are listening or watching us can, like, follow you as well as, like, you know, you and your company's progress? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. ES1 Films. So, E, E, um, S, and then the number one spelled out. So, E, S, O, N, E, Films. Um, yeah, that's, that's on Instagram. That's on uh, Twitter. That is everywhere. <laughs> LinkedIn, ES1 Films. Uh, it's just it's just easy. ES1 Films, pronounced. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Um, yeah. All right. Or well, Eddie Sanchez. Eddie. You could just Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could work. Too. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> could be a little quicker. Director, I guess. producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Eddie, thank you so much for joining us yes. today. Really appreciate your time and uh, appreciate your knowledge too. So thank you for giving us both. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem.